Another non-specific defense mechanism that can help fight off pathogens once they get into the body is the complement system. The complement system is made up of a group of about 25 proteins that circulate in your blood. Most of the complement proteins are made by your liver. So these are yet more examples of important plasma proteins made by the liver. As long as nothing's wrong, your complement proteins just circulate in your blood with no problem. But when they encounter some sort of a pathogen, the complement proteins bind to the surface of a pathogen, and this triggers a series of reactions. We've seen this sort of thing before, a series of reactions, where one reaction causes the next, causes the next, causes the next. This happens with those complement proteins. Binding of the complement protein to a pathogen triggers a series of reactions that eventually activate complement. When complement is activated, it has a number of important functions for getting rid of pathogens. One of the things activated complement does is it increases inflammation. Activated complement proteins attract neutrophils and other leukocytes, and they stimulate mast cells and basophils. So once complement is activated, it's going to increase inflammation by attracting more inflammatory cells and the release of more inflammatory chemicals. A second mechanism of complement is that complement makes it easier for the white blood cells to phagocytize pathogens. Complement does this through a process called opsonization. And opsonization, complement proteins bind to and coat the outside of a pathogen. And that makes it a lot easier for neutrophils or macrophages to get a hold of that pathogen and phagocytize it. Pathogens can be a little bit slippery on their own, and that makes it hard for them to be phagocytized. They've got a nice uh, kind of slimy capsule on them. But opsonization makes them less slippery so they're easier to phagocytize so that we can clear them out of the body faster. The third mechanism by which complement helps uh, get rid of pathogens is actually my favorite. It's a process called cytolysis. Cyto meaning cell and lysis meaning to break. In this case, we actually break a pathogen cell. For the process of cytolysis to work, the activated complement proteins form a ring called a membrane attack complex. This ring of complement proteins inserts into the pathogen membrane and it makes a hole in the pathogen membrane. The hole allows water to come in by osmosis and the pathogen cell swells until it bursts. That's cytolysis. So complement helps to fight pathogens through increasing inflammation, opsonization to help with phagocytizing pathogens, and cytolysis to destroy the pathogens directly. We've talked a lot about macrophages and neutrophils and how they attack pathogens. Natural killer cells are another important type of cell that can destroy pathogens. Natural killer cells um, recognize cells that have the wrong cell identity markers and will attack them. This includes bacteria and also transplanted cells, cancer cells, or cells that are infected with a virus or a parasite or other sort of pathogen. The way natural killer cells destroy these cells that don't belong is by releasing perforins and granzymes. Perforins are proteins that insert themselves into the pathogen or the infected cell membrane, and they form a ring in the membrane to make a hole. This is very similar to the way the complement proteins form their membrane attack complex, but it's different proteins that are involved. So these perforins create a hole in the pathogen cell membrane, and then granzymes are released by the natural killer cell. These granzymes are proteins, they're enzymes, that go into the pathogen or the infected cell through the hole made by the perforins, and then they start attacking the inside of the cell, and that causes the cell to die. If it's a pathogen cell, like a cancer cell or a bacteria cell, that's great that we've killed it. If it's an infected cell, we had to kill our own cell, but it kills the infection with it. Another second line of defense mechanism is something we've probably all experienced, and that's fever. A fever is a systemic increase in body temperature. By systemic, I mean it affects the whole body. It's not just local. The heat that we see from inflammation is a local response, one area of tissue, whereas fever affects the whole body. 
Your body's temperature is controlled by the thermostat in the hypothalamus of your brain. That's what detects the temperature of your body and determines if it needs to be raised or lowered. During an infection, certain molecules called pyrogens may be released either by your own white blood cells or by the pathogen. And these pyrogens go into your bloodstream and they travel to the hypothalamus and they change the set temperature for your body. They increase the temperature that your body tries to maintain. This, although it feels uncomfortable because having a fever isn't fun, has a number of positive effects when it comes to fighting pathogens. First, the increased body temperature inhibits the reproduction of some pathogens. It doesn't necessarily kill them. We don't get our body temperature hot enough to kill the pathogens because that would kill our own cells too, but it gets warm enough to keep them from reproducing. That slows down their spread so that our other mechanisms have time to clear out the pathogens. Second, a fever increases the activity of our own leukocytes. So our white blood cells will respond better to the pathogen if it's a little bit warmer. And third, having a fever increases the basal metabolic rate of the body. And when we increase the metabolic rate, the rate at which our body can use energy, we can increase the rate of tissue repair so we can repair any damage more quickly.